Hello, this is BBC World News. I'm Kasia Madeira. Coming up in a minute, World Have Your Say. But first, a look at the latest headlines. Ukrainian forces are clashing with pro-Russian militants in the eastern city of Slovyansk. And the government said forces had taken control of nine checkpoints around the city. Pro-Russian forces say that they still control three. Two Ukrainian helicopters have been shot down and the pilots killed. And reports from the southern port city of Odessa say that one person has been killed in clashes between pro-Russian militants and supporters of the country's unity. Two people are said to have been injured. It is unclear who opened fire, although one report speaks of the militants using assault rifles. A truce has been agreed between Syrian government forces and rebels in the besieged city of Homs, allowing opposition fighters to withdraw from their positions. A prominent campaign group says that about a thousand fighters were expected to leave the city over the next 48 hours. Well, I'm back in an hour with a full bulletin of world news. But first, over to Chloe Tilly with World Have Your Say. Thanks, Kasia, and welcome. Well, we begin the programme in eastern Ukraine. After admitting being overwhelmed by pro-Russian rebels, the government has hit back in Slovansk, saying it's reclaimed parts of the city. But it's a fluid situation. Several foreign journalists have been seized. Some have been released. We'll speak to one in a moment. Also, in Donetsk and Luhansk, buildings have been seized by rebels. We're going to hear what it's like to live in that region. Then we'll switch our attention to Nigeria. After the explosion in Abuja, which killed 19 people, Many Nigerians have been getting in touch with us asking why, after the security budget has been doubled in five years, they feel no safer. Well, you can see that people are lined up, we're ready to speak to us from across Ukraine. Nigerians will be joining us a little bit later on. And interestingly, criticism is being levelled at the Nigerian police that two weeks after more than 200 girls were abducted from a school, only now are they asking parents for photographs to exact establish exactly how many girls were taken. If you're in Nigeria or indeed Ukraine, these are all of the ways for you to get in touch with us over the next hour. Good to have your company for the next hour here on World Have Your Say. We will begin in Ukraine. Lots of lines coming out. You heard in the news there about that shooting in Odessa. But let's speak straight to some guests in various parts of eastern Ukraine to get a real insight into what is happening in the country at the moment. Let me introduce you to them. We've got Mike Giglio, who is a Middle East correspondent for BuzzFeed, currently in Donetsk. Also Boris, who's a writer from Odessa, and Mikhail, who works in a consultancy in Donetsk. Let's cross to Mike, first of all, who was arrested and blindfolded today. I wonder if we can pull Mike's line up right now. Yet yeah, we can see Mike. So, Mike, tell me what happened to you today. So, I was on my way with my translator from uh, Donetsk to Slavansk, and we were detained at a checkpoint uh, by pro Russian militants and blindfolded and held for about three hours before finally being released. And how were you treated during those three hours? Um, there's, there's very uh, rampant anti-American sentiment among these people and also anti-Western sentiment, and they're very suspicious of journalists. I think that they were worried that we were spies. Um, they definitely believe the propaganda they're seeing on Russian television. Um, you know, so they were very aggressive toward us, but they were also trying to reassure us that it would be okay in the end. And uh, once they finally decided to release us, and we did hear some talk, where our translators did, from uh, the captors about taking us hostage. Um, then they were very polite and apologetic and even served us tea before we left. Give me an idea of how that is reflective of what's going on in Slovansk at the moment. Obviously, you talk about being a foreign journalist, they're suspicious of you. But for the people who live there, what did you see? I didn't, I didn't make it there to, to, unfortunately, to speak to anybody in Slovansk. And I, I would say that it's just it's mass confusion here. Um, and I'm sure, it's, I'm sure it's even worse down there. Um, you know, just coming, even, even on, even on the, the part of the guys with guns who are in control or in nominal control, um, as we were blindfolded driving from one pro-Russia pro checkpoint to the next, our, our pro-Russia captors were cocking their guns as we approached because they, they're, they're suspicious of one another. You know, they don't know who each other are. They don't know if they're going to be able to pass. So I think it really is just chaos here right now. Let's speak to Mikhail, who's in Donetsk. We've heard there's been a lot of um, unsettling in Donetsk in, in recent days, in recent weeks. We hear there what happened to Mike today. For you, what's the situation in Donetsk at the moment, and how do you feel being there? 
Actually, uh, we are very worried in Donetsk because Slavyansk is very close to us, and Slavyansk is a main base of the uh, Russian terrorists. Uh, actually, in Donetsk, the situation is quite easier than in Slavyansk because uh, of the activity is located uh, in the several buildings in, in a few, few locations. Uh, they hold uh, central administration, see, uh, oblast administration, they hold prosecutor office and the main TV station, something like that. Actually, it's not the, the key uh, to, the, to the power, it's just like a symbol. The, the, they hold the buildings, they uh, walk on the street with the weapons. It's not a good situation, it's not very easy for, for people to stay here, but much more easy than in Slavinsk. When, you t when we hear Mike talk about confusion and suspicion, is that the sense that you get in your city? Yes, yeah, something like that. We are waiting for the, uh, for the uh, uh, militia, we are waiting for the, for the National Guard, uh, we are waiting, they come and help us to be free as, uh, again. Let's bring in Boris, who's in Odessa. We said at the beginning of the programme, Kasia was saying in the news, reports of someone being shot dead in Odessa. Is there a similar sense of confusion where you are? OK, Odessa was a relatively peaceful city until now. You know, in Odessa, we have groups which are pro-Russians, and they have a place for their meeting, and the Maidan, people who have another place, and police make sure that they wouldn't meet. But today in Odessa, there is a football game between Kharkov and between Odessa, and fans, football fans, gather together to uh, make a meeting in support of unity of Ukraine. And the people who are pro-Russian, they blocked them and then attack them with a Molotov cocktail and with uh, sticks and uh, uh, I believe that ultras, we name football fans, ultras, they were prepared. They had some things along and they repeat the same way when they were attacked. In clashes, several people were wounded and uh, I believe one is killed, but uh, recently one lady told me that three victims of these clashes. Now the situation is uh, quite calm, police interfere, and uh, actually I live very near of a place when all the things uh, was going, so um, now it is in another place, so-called Greek Square, but uh, no clashes there, police probably now control situation, control situation. It's worth saying to people watching around the world the geography of Ukraine. Um, we're saying Donetsk is in the east of the country, Odessa in the south, so an area which hasn't been quite so affected by the crisis in the last few weeks, obviously linked at the beginning when um, there was the crisis in Crimea, but a different part of the country. And, Mike, I guess that's the concern for people, that in the east of the country this pressure has been growing, there have been these uprisings, but in the south of the country and other parts of the country that hasn't been the case are you getting a sense that this really is spreading no i I, I would say if i were in odessa right now i would be very concerned that's exactly how it started here you know there's there's some protests there's some unrest there are some clashes i mean i was here when the first person was killed in donetsk when a uh, pro-ukraine rally was was attacked by a uh, pro-russia one and uh you know the kremlin and the pro-russia media immediately uh seized on that as as a you know, a propaganda tool to suggest that there was violence, that Russia needed to intervene, that the situation was unstable, and we had a, we had a gradual uh, spiral into chaos from there. Mikhail, in Donetsk, we understand Russia is now calling for the UN Security Council to have a meeting over what it describes as the attack on Slavansk. Do you worry that this is really ratcheting up the pressure, or do you feel that this is just a continuation of what we've seen in recent days and weeks? I guess it's just continuation. Uh, I guess we will not stop with uh, anti-terrorist operations. I, I guess we will, uh, we will, we will, we will be supported by the world in in, in that effort. Mike, I know that you tweeted earlier on when you were held um, for those three hours. You were talking about how they'd asked you to prove that you were American. Tell us a little bit more about that. 
Yeah, I, I think this really speaks to the fact that these are just amateurs with guns for the most part, um, especially the people on the ground manning the checkpoints. So uh, they they were trying to find out whether we were lying about our identities. And, uh, you know, they had, I had my passport on me. I was very open about being an American citizen. And, uh, you know, they, they came up to me and asked me where I was from. I said United States. They asked me the capital of the United States. Uh, and then they asked me to pronounce the word garden. And I, and I guess I did that to their satisfaction. They determined that I wasn't lying to them and uh, offered me water. Well, Mike, Boris and Mikhail, thank you all for joining us here on World Have Your Say. We're going to switch our attention in the next few minutes to the events in Nigeria. Those 200 girls, possibly up to 300, it's still unclear how many were abducted a couple of weeks ago from that boarding school in the very north of Nigeria. We're going to be speaking to Nigerians about their campaign to try and bring their girls back alive. Do stay with us here on World Have Your Say. No, I Talking about it. Check. Oh, but let me say something. Talking about it. Check. Oh, but let me say something. If you need me, call me. No matter where you are. No matter how far. Just call my name. I'll be there in a hurry. If you don't have to worry. Delivering Manchester United to the world. DHL. Excellence simply delivered for you. Five dynamic CEOs. Well, Spiker obviously means a lot to me because it's my baby. Challenged by their staff. They really want me to feel the pain. <laughs> to join the workforce. Yes, to turn around. Turn around. Now it's right. He's not as quick as the mechanics. And take a fresh look at their business. I learnt more from that than I would from reading any kind of textbook. As they escape from the boardroom. This weekend on BBC World News. No, I... I am talking about it. Jim, oh, let me say something. Welcome back to World Have Your Say. We're going to concentrate now on Nigeria. Of course, that bomb blast um, which killed 19 people. Still, people desperately trying to get information about those 200 girls or so who have been abducted from that boarding school in the north of Nigeria. Still not clear how many girls have actually been taken. Nigerian police now asking the parents to provide photographs of their girls that have gone missing so they can actually get an exact number two weeks after they were taken lots of criticism about that a big twitter campaign lots of people using the hashtag pray for nigeria bring back our girls let's speak to a few people who are inside nigeria to get their take on the situation and how the violence can be stopped in their country we are joined by blossom who is a blogger and an author she joins us from abuja and we are also joined by mina salami who's an african African feminist and writer in London. Welcome both of you to World Have Your Say. Blossom, first of all, I know that you went out and marched on Wednesday in support of trying to bring these girls home, but before we speak about that, focus on this bomb blast in Abuja, in your city. Your reaction to how you think the violence can be stopped in your country? Um. The, the bomb blast actually took everyone by surprise. You know, yesterday was a public holiday, so a lot of people were just at home resting. And then towards uh, it's about 7 p.m., you know, um, I actually got the news first from Twitter, um, a social media platform, and it got everyone by surprise because um, the challenge with, um, with um, insurgents and, you know, terrorism as it is, in Nigeria is not just about um, a group of people you know trying to make um, the state ungovernable or trying to put fear into citizens the basic thing that um, we seem to to have missed out is is the issue of trust because on a very good day you know the people are supposed to be united with one voice to say that enough is enough but then what we have is uh, is, is a kind of friction where um, even when people want to unite in one voice to resist what is not good, there seems to be the trust. Can we trust our government, you know, to be able to speak our voice and to speak um, 
to meet the demands of the people. But on my own personal perspective, I believe that the, 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 the best approach you know, to, to curbing violence as it is and to put, to put in a stop to what we see presently is for the, is for the government you know, to not just have those policies on paper, but to take um, concise and precise actions that can actually make citizens to, to trust them more and to trust that their actions are indeed for our own good. And then the, the, the military, you know, the, 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 the joint task force, the JTF, they've actually been doing their best, you know, trying to uh, maintain some sem um, semblance of sanity in the North East and even in Nigeria as a whole. But I think um, for their morale to be really high and, and, and built up to continue doing what they've been doing, need, um, they need the, um, to get the buy-in of the people to actually trust that they are actually doing So it's about trust right for you, way. Blossom, and, and about the government informing you more. It's worth telling people watching all around the world that Boko Haram, the Islamist group, is being blamed for this bombing. It hasn't claimed responsibility. Also blamed for taking these 200 girls from northern Nigeria. And until a few weeks ago, it, it was very much their, their attacks were confined to the north of the country. Now in the capital, Abuja, it's spreading fear and people have concerns that the Nigerian government is not taking a hold of this situation. Let's bring in Mina. I was saying in the introduction, the government has nearly doubled its security budget in the last five years, but many people getting in touch with World Have Your Say over the past week saying, we don't feel any safer. What do you think? I completely agree with what people are expressing, as well as what Blossom has just said. Um, this is hugely a question about trust um, for Nigerian citizens to be able to trust their government and their leadership. I think that it is a tragedy that the situation is being allowed to happen. And I do think that it's being allowed to happen, first and foremost, by the Nigerian government, the Nigerian leadership, which has displayed a painful incompetency at tackling Boko Haram at large, but also this particular situation of repeated bombings and the girls that have been abducted. But above all, the Nigerian government has failed to reassure its citizens that it is in control of the situation and that it is doing everything that it can um, to take action and to, to return the girls, to stop the bombings. I also think it's being allowed to happen by the international community and by that I mean that it has just taken very long for people to react to the situation and we now know that the girls have been transported across Nigerian borders. Um, it has taken quite long for the media to start covering the issue for, for world leaders and for international organizations even such as UN Women to take an active stand against um, what, is, what is happening and I think well, that Mina, you'll, you'll be pleased to know that from the, the outset World Have Your Say has been covering this not only here on BBC World News but also on World Service Radio. Let's bring in IZ who joins us from our Lagos studio. I know that you also marched in support of these missing girls but let's talk for a moment about security and uh, Mina said there about the lack of faith she has in the government do you have faith in your government to tackle this issue of violence right now yeah. go ahead I we're no. listening to you and I think thank you for a lot of Yes, I think okay, it's that looks like a hideous line to our Lagos Bureau. We will try and sort out that. But in the meantime, we've been sent this video from Bauchi in the northeastern part of Nigeria. Take a look. That bumbling is anti Jonathan. They are not thinking in the process of progressing Nigeria. Those terrorists are even anti nations. They require prayer and commitment toward every Nigerian in order to fight against the, corrupt, uh, the, the, the terrorism. That is my view. Thank you. Well, let's put that point to Blossom. The point made there is there's no point criticising the government. The only way your country is going to move forward is actually to support the government and their efforts to try and combat terrorism. Exactly. I, I, I support that um, in totality. Um, the 200 plus abducted girls, you know, 
the, 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 the whole conversation, not just starting around a, a, a hashtag online. There's also been the, uh, the offline representation where people from various um, parts of the country have been, you know, matching in solidarity and insisting that the government should do more. But then the, 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 the challenge there is um, there's a kind of um, feeling around, the, around the, 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 the everywhere, you know, some people are looking at it as, okay, this is an, an opportunity for the opposition, you know, to hijack this solidarity movement and then now make it to be um, a case of the people against the government. But then when you have this kind of scenario, what you see um, happen is um, um, you hardly achieve results. Rather, what you see happen is people will now refuse to take responsibility and then more or less be focusing on how to clear um, their names out of uh, out of the whole um, scenario. So my joining the, the the campaign, you know, to demand that the government should actually um, enhance um, whatever efforts that they have already put in place to um, reunite them with their families is not me saying um, I'm anti the government. It's me saying that I support whatever cause that the government wants to put in place to assure every single Nigeria that their life is worth living, that they, um, somebody is actually supposed to be there to govern them um, properly, the way things are. But then, unfortunately, when these things happen, you cannot remove um, um, the element of mischief. Yeah, that, 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 is, that is very true. But then I would want to encourage every young Nigerian, old, um, middle aged any Nigerian that is actually um, have already bought into this cause um, of bring back our girls and all that, to look beyond the political sentiments or ethnicity sentiments or religious lines, as the case may be, and then but just almost pull um, together, focus. Blossom. Blossom, let me introduce you to Atom. Uh, but first, lots of comments coming into us from around the world. Uh, Camille from Canada has picked up the phone and given us a call. Um, there's a lot of slackness in the leadership in Nigeria. The president doesn't have a military background, which I I think is a prerequisite for running African countries. If you want to add your thoughts, we're on the hashtag WHYS on Twitter. Let's go to Atom, who's in Ogun State. Do you recognise what we heard there on the video, that actually we need to support the Nigerian government to help them tackle terrorists? Blossom was agreeing with that. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think that everyone uh, has a role to play in tackling tackling this issue. Uh, it's not a question of uh, necessarily uh, uh, supporting the government as uh, it, because when we put it like that, it's like it's a government versus the people. I think that every Nigerian has a role to play. Uh, as much as I agree that uh, Nigerians should uh, encode support the government, I think that the government uh, has failed to give Nigerians a sort of confidence that they require to, to, to get the support that they, 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 they ask for. Uh, and that is a critical uh, missing link in this fight against terrorism. There is a, a disconnect between the people and the government. Uh, and I think that the government needs to do uh, enough to, to, to uh, you know, to increase the level of uh, awareness about this issue and, and generally improve its communications uh, with people on, on this matter. I can see there, Mina, you're nodding your head, but to be fair to the Nigerian government, on this programme just a week ago, Dr Ruben Abati, who is the spokesman for uh, President Goodluck Jonathan, came onto this programme and answered listeners' questions, answered viewers' questions from around the world and said, just because you don't know what we're doing publicly, it doesn't mean we're not doing things behind the scenes to try and release these girls and to try and stop the terrorism. I don't think that that is enough. I think uh, Nigerian citizens have elected this government partly so that they can deal with these kinds of situations, but part of that job is to actually ensure citizens that um, what, it, what is happening. And I understand that there might be certain things that cannot be disclosed due to security reasons. However, it is very important for Nigerians, especially at this point in time, to feel like we have a government that is effective and that, and that understands its role also as, uh, as a reassurer of sorts. And we just haven't been given much reassurance that the situation is being tackled. In fact, we've been given 
quite the opposite. We've been made to feel as though the situation is out of hand, and I think this is creating a sense of, of panic. And there's a lot of a lot at stake. Um, just a few weeks ago, we were we were the news about Nigeria was that we were the the biggest economy in Africa, and now that seems to be almost forgotten. And instead, Nigerians are, are truly in a state of of worry, and and the government has to address this if they want us to support them. Well, Mina, I can see that you are nodding. Atom, you are as well. But I want to pull up this conversation. Um, Ajay posted this on punching.com. Why did they wait for days and for weeks to take action? Our number one problem is wicked, wicked leadership. Straight away, uh, this response from Naje Observer Mission. He replied by saying, Mr. President did not set off that bomb. It is an uphill task to win guerrilla warfare. Well, if you, I can see Atom is nodding at that. Atom, a brief response to that. You're nodding. Yeah, well, I, 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 look, the, the, the thinking is that uh, when people come out to say that uh, they're criticizing the government, the thinking is that they are opposed to the government. And the people are opposed to the government. People just want a sense of security and this government has failed to do that so far it took as, as someone rightly said it took them so long to act and even as i speak to you 18 days after these girls were taking no one is setting how many girls were taking we were going to discuss that more after um, a quick break we have to take a break now but we will come straight back and talk about those missing girls do stay with us Hello there. The weather has been pretty stormy and unsettled through many central parts of continental Europe. And the same can be said for Friday's weather too. Here's an area of low pressure across the north of Italy, bringing further heavy showers, some thunderstorms as well, pushing in towards the Balkans later on overnight. For parts of Spain and Portugal, things are looking reasonably dry and quiet overnight tonight as we head through into Saturday. And for the UK and France, after the recent wet weather, things are looking a bit calmer for the weekend. Across Scandinavia, we've got a northerly breeze, so feeling quite cold here. Plenty of that heavy rain still lingering across Italy on Saturday, pushing into the Balkans and eastern parts of Europe as well. But towards the southwest of Europe, the sunshine dominates for Portugal and Spain. It's another decent day on Saturday, 30 degrees or so in Seville. An onshore breeze around the south coast, so a pleasant day to come here. Bit more cloud as we head up across France with a few showers in the southeast. A bit of an improvement for the UK, but some rain into Northern Ireland, for instance, later on. And as we look across much of Scandinavia, a lot of dry weather on the cards, but that northerly breeze will make things feel quite cold, just seven degrees or so, for instance, in Helsinki. Now, as we look through Sunday and Monday, the weather quietens down for many central parts of Europe. Still quite cold, though, in Berlin. On to Africa now, where there'll be some scattered heavy showers affecting parts of Libya into Egypt as well. Gusty winds in and around the showers. A fine day in Cape Town at 22 degrees. Some heavy rain for Kenya and Tanzania. That's it. More online. Bye-bye. Partnerships occur when both share a passion for improving, for growing in harmony. Speak from the heart and respect the other. feeling of being comfortable, of being open, that creates the true partnership, which ensures the greatest success. Together, invest in remarkable Indonesia. My grandmother used to tell me that you will never walk free on the streets, but now I'm very proud because I can go anywhere I want to go without having my ID inside my pocket. No one can come to me say, you are not supposed to be here. I've been to jail. It was for theft. I stole a phone. I end up going to jail for a phone. It affects my parents because they know that people, they are dying inside that prison. People, they are sick in that prison. Now, my plan, 
My plan is to finish my school, to do better things. Freedom means to me living a better life and a better future. My name is Mathatsi Lekhori and I'm part of the Bond Free Generation. Hello, I'm Chloe Tilly. Well, we're hearing from Nigerians about what will stop the violence in their country. In recent weeks, there have been car bombings and, of course, the abduction of more than 200 schoolgirls, despite a doubling of the security budget over the last five years. Well, Nigerians have taken to the streets and to Twitter with the Bring Back Our Girls Alive campaign. Welcome back to World Have Your Say. Well, let's begin by talking about those 200 schoolgirls who are still missing after being abducted from their school two weeks ago. We're going to talk about the many marches that have taken place across Nigeria over the past week. We're joined by Mina, uh, Mina Salami, who is an African feminist and writer. She is in London. Akida is a Nigerian blogger in Rhode Island in the US. But first, let's speak to IZ, who is in Lagos. Hopefully, we have cleared up that line. And I know, IZ, that you went actually out out on a march on Thursday in Lagos in support of these girls. Explain to us a little bit about that march. How many people turned out? What was the mood? Okay, the mood was um, we have about 200, 250 people that turned up for the march, maybe more. The mood was anger, mostly fear. People just wanted to get their girls, wanted the government to finally speak to us, maybe answer us and tell us what they're doing to get our girls back. Um, the mood were also concerned. We're, we we needed we needed to we needed our voices to be heard, basically. Do you feel that the march was the best way to get that voice heard? We know there's been huge campaigns on Twitter with the hashtag Bring Back Our Girls and Bring Back Our Girls Alive. Is the march the thing for you that made you feel that you would be listened to? Yes, we had to get off. We had to get off social media. We had to get off our phones. We had to get off our systems. We had to get on the streets. A lot of Nigerians. I went just before the march. I went round telling people about the march, telling people that they had to show up. And a lot of Nigerians didn't know that 200 girls had been abducted. They didn't know that there was there were girls abducted by the Boko Haram and they had been missing for 16 days. So it was it was right. It was the right time to get on the streets. We should, probably should have gotten on the streets earlier. It was right at that time that we should get on the streets. And um, people, so that people could see, people could hear, people could know and know join join the action, take part in in asking for the government to bring back our girls. I said, let me bring up this comment, um, which um, has been posted on Facebook. Theon in Tria, Trinidad and Tobago said on Facebook, hashtags definitely won't bring them back. There has been some criticism that on social media it's easy to tweet a hashtag, to retweet a campaign. More action needs to be done by the people of Nigeria. Yes, yes, definitely. We need to act more. We need to do more. We need to be more. We can't, we can't keep quiet and think, OK, maybe we'll um, tweet out a couple of hashtags and then some government will see and then maybe... It, it's, it's beyond the hashtag. It's, it's murders on the streets. If we don't do that, people will react. The government won't react. They need to know that we're ready. We're ready to demand. We're not going to just... After the last several times, um, these bombings, these ab abductions happen, and then we just tweet up tweets, we Facebook, and then it passes. This time, it's going to be beyond social media. It's it's not going to be a one time only. It's going to be until somebody listens and until somebody gets our girls back. It's been 18 let, days. Let me bring in. Do forgive me for jumping in, Ized. I want to bring in Akida. He's a, he's a Nigerian blogger in Rhode Island. Do you think that's fair criticism that hashtags aren't going to bring the girls back? Nigerians need to do more themselves. Well, um, I must say that I salute everyone on social media <clears throat> that is um, retweeting, uh, Facebooking, and uh, sharing awareness with the world about what is happening in Nigeria. I must tell you this. The only thing remotely holding the Nigerian government accountable today 
is the action on social media. Um, we will not be here today without the, uh, without the words of those brave uh, women and children on social media uh, trying to uh, hold the government accountable, trying to get them to do what they should be doing. Uh, we do not have a single name of, 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 of these kids that have been adopt, abducted. The, this government has no communication mechanism to deal with the Nigerian people. How, what else do you want them to do? Now, I, I do agree that at some point, uh, people should flood the streets and get Nigeria back. It is important to get our girls back, but we should also get Nigeria back from these people. They don't know what they're doing. Akita, I want to um, introduce you now to Dr. Pogo Beatrice, who is chairman of the Kabaku Area Development Association. He's currently in Abuja, but he's from the Chubuk area, which is where these girls were. He indeed knows many of the parents of the girls who have been abducted. Dr. Beatrice, welcome to World Have Your Say, and I appreciate you taking the time out to speak with us. Just bring us right up to date with any information you have on the girls' whereabouts. Um, majority of the girls, as we believe, are still within the Sambisa forest. Uh, we got information that uh, a few of them, a couple of them, were taken outside the country and some married off. Because uh, right from the word go, on the fateful day, that was Tuesday, uh, a truck was seen taking some of these girls to the northern part of Borno. And that, uh, these are the ones that we suspect were taken out of the country, but we still believe that the majority of these girls are still around uh, the Sambisa forest, or so leading towards Goza area of, uh, you know, uh, at the outskirts of the forest. And can I ask where you're getting your information from? Are you in contact with the group who are holding the girls, or is this directly from the Nigerian government? No. Uh, we have people who pass information to us uh, on daily basis. Hunters, uh, because the Sambisa Forest is a game area, uh, hunters move around, they see things happening, and they pass information to us. Uh, but as to the last movement towards the Goza area, uh, Monday morning, early morning, we got information that about seven buses containing girls were moved towards the Goza area. So, and we believe uh, there isn't anybody who would dare move on that road if it's not uh, accompanied by the Boko Haram. So we believe uh, they must be the girls. Akida, I can see that you're reacting to what Dr. Beatrice is saying, shaking your head. I wonder if you have a question for him. He has, but uh, basically uh, what he has just said amplifies why Nigerians are frustrated. Uh, is it acceptable to you that uh, weeks after the abductions, there is not a single list of these girls? Uh, nobody seems to know uh, who they are, how many they are. Uh, this government is incompetent, and the only way to support them is to hold them accountable. Uh, it's just appalling to me. It's appalling to me that uh, we are getting information from uh, from so so sources and with all due respect unreliable sources will this uh, is this acceptable to you it's not acceptable uh, this these children go to schools they went to schools is there a register uh, do they have families uh, the the nigerian people have lost total confidence in the ability of this government to protect uh, her people uh, then today Nigeria well, Akita, let, let's get Dr. Beatrice to respond to the point you make. Yeah, um, you see, I wouldn't want to be dragged into the politics of this thing. All we are after is we want our daughters back. Uh, we know that uh, the uh, Nigerian army government and the security agencies have challenges. Uh, we also do appreciate uh, our difficulties at this particular time. Uh, we know the circumstances that brought uh, this government into office. Uh, we uh, supported this government, that is the people from Chibok. Uh, in fact, in Borno State, the best result Mr. President got is from that area. Unfortunately, uh, this is something that uh, it's, uh, I mean, uh, has uh, 
uh, downed on the area and uh, there isn't much we can do about it. Now, uh, with regards to information dissemination and what have you, um, we know that the technologies here are not as uh, sophisticated as those in the West, uh, and we believe that uh, the security agencies are doing what is possible within the uh, means they have. Uh, but since they have not uh, disclosed this to us, we cannot quote anything from those sources. All we are saying is we are urging them to move faster, to find ways and means, whether support is from abroad or wherever, and then get these girls back to school and back to their parents. Uh, we don't want to be dragged into the politics of whether government is competent or incompetent. All we know is the government of Nigeria has the capacity to get these girls and bring them back to their parents. And that's what we want them to do. I said, I know that you have a question for Dr. Beatrice. No, I'm, I'm, I just wonder why, if they have this information that they have, from these hunters, why why is the military not working with the same information? Why why are we wait? What are, what are they waiting for right now? Why will a bus seven buses with girls move out of the country? What 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 are they waiting for? That, that's my question. It's been 18 days. What are they waiting for? Why are they not working? Um. If you would want me to answer that question, um, the area around Goza has been a no-go area for some time. Uh, the Boko Haram has inflicted a lot of pains, burnt villages, and the place is deserted. So uh, uh, this, I believe, the Nigerian uh, forces, uh, the security uh, agents, are uh, trying to rescue these girls alive. Remember that the Boko Haram is a vicious group. Uh, they don't uh, give a damn about human life. And uh, uh, any physical contact or combat may result to losses of lives of these girls. Maybe the security forces are thinking of the best way of rescuing them without uh, having them uh, killed. Uh, that is left for the security agencies to answer. But all the same, I cannot imagine that uh, the security agencies of uh, this country will just sit there and do nothing. Uh, they haven't uh, told us what they are doing, but I believe they are doing something because deployments that I know, deployments to the areas have been made. Uh, how they are doing it is what I wouldn't know. But we, all we want is to encourage them to ensure that we get our daughters back. Dr. Beatrice, I know that you know many of the families, the parents who have been affected. Tell us a little bit about those families, about some of the girls that you know. Yeah, majority of these girls are from uh, Chibok local government area and belong to the tribe called Kibako. Um, uh, from the statistics uh, I have, uh, 181 of those in custody, in, in, uh, in, uh, 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 under custody of the Boko Haram, are from this local government, and about uh, 39 or so are from the adjoining local governments of Askrauba. Um, uh, this is uh, the statistics we have. Um, the, the school is predominantly a girl school, though they have started admitting boys. And all the girls abducted are uh, the senior secondary school uh, level three girls. We call, them, uh, we call it SS3. So age bracket maybe 17, 18. And um, uh, that's all I can say for now. Uh, the statistics of the girls has been given by uh, the principal of the school, and all the disputes about numbers are uncalled for. At least somebody has records, and the principal has given her records, and it is that record that we depend upon. Well, many people are watching this all around the world and getting in touch with us from Mali, Angola, France, India, Germany, the Netherlands. The list goes on. If you want to get involved with us, the hashtag is WHYS on Twitter or head to facebook.com forward slash world have your say. But Stephen in Ibadan sent us this video. The time to heart is now. My heart is broken. Her daughters have been taken away from horse. 234 has become a memorable number, but not for good cause. It's been two weeks. And all we hear is that her daughters have been abducted. I can't imagine the pains and agony their parents are going through right now. Their sleepless night, their tears, 
This could have happened to anyone. This could have been your daughter, your sister, niece, goddaughter, and your students. All they wanted to go to school and read. What crime do they commit to deserve this wicked and humane treatment? We are not going to relent in prayers. The time to act is now. Thank you. Makes a valid point there. It could have been any of our, our brothers, uh, sorry, our sisters, our daughters who have been caught up in this. Do you ever feel, Dr. Beatrice, that the media is forgetting about these, um, these girls and that the world's media is not giving the attention to their plight that they should have had? Uh, no, to the contrary, I believe the media is giving the uh, right publicity and uh, the right attention. Uh, without the media, uh, these girls would have been lost just like uh, girls from Kwanduga. Uh, Kwanduga, when uh, the Boko Haram attacked Kwanduga, they uh, abducted about 30, 32 girls or thereabout. Uh, nothing has been heard about those girls. Nobody made any campaign. But in this case, uh, there is a lot of information going around. The whole world is being informed. And uh, we are grateful to the media for this effort. And uh, without the media, uh, uh, the misinformation that came out first would have uh, carried the day. Uh, so we, we are really grateful for the media, both uh, electronic and uh, print, uh, for the effort being made to uh, put pressure on government to get these girls rescued from captivity. Well, do stay with us here on World Have Your Say. The German Chancellor Angela Merkel and President Obama are about to give a joint news conference from Washington, D.C. You can see the pictures behind me now. We will keep across that, bring you any of the highlights. But stay with us and we'll carry on talking about Nigeria in the next few minutes. No, I, I, I am talking about it. Yeah, point, but let me say something. Breaking news, reports, and analysis from a source you can trust on social media. We are the most shared international news brand on Twitter and have over 20 million Facebook page likes worldwide. Subscribe, follow, like. BBC, the leader in global breaking news. In order to save it from complete collapse, a state-of-the-art replica of Tutankhamun's tomb has been painstakingly created. The Travel Show has exclusive access to the key players in this epic drama. So, a new tomb for Tutankhamun and a new start for Egypt's tourism? The Travel Show, only on BBC World News. Welcome to Talking Movies. I'm Tom Brook. The man from the BBC. How are you? Yeah. Lovely to see you. We travel the globe, covering the world of cinema, going behind the scenes, meeting the big players. We're here on BBC World News, and our content is online too. We look at how movies entertain us and affect our lives. We're a global operation with reporters in Mumbai. Money and marketability is a big question mark on filmmakers in India. Africa. This is uncharted territory for performance arts in Nigeria. London. The films were not shot in Hollywood, but right here in the UK. And the US. Can Hollywood make religious films that appeal to a broad audience? We approach our work with a journalistic zeal. So sly with your questions. I'm very sly. Follow us on BBC World News, on television, online and in social media. Three, two, one. Welcome back. We're discussing how to stop the violence in Nigeria. Lots of you getting in touch with us from all around the world. Ethiopia, Pakistan, South Korea and Tony in Spain has picked up the phone and given us a call. He says the people who are doing this are blackmailing a government that was trying to take the country in the right direction. If Boko Haram succeed in Nigeria, it will be uncontrollable. Well, we are still joined by Dr. Pogo Beatrice, who um, is from the area of Nigeria where these girls who were taken from the school are from. And Mina is um, a feminist and a writer in London. I know, Mina, you've got a question for Dr. Beatrice. 
Well, I agree very much that the media is playing a significant role in terms of raising awareness and also making, forcing people to take action towards rescuing the girls. Um, in fact, I think that the media and socio-political pressure from Nigerian citizens as well as women's rights organizations seem to be the best hope that the girls have at the moment. And I was curious or I'm wondering on what grounds the doctor feels that Nigerians should continue to trust that the Nigerian military and Nigerian government are taking action because we know from past incidents that they indeed have neglected to take adequate action in situations like this. So on what grounds are we exactly to be trusting that this time around there's something different going on? Oh, um, if I would want me to respond. Um, uh, I, I believe that the pressure being brought to bear on the government uh, is forcing government to do something. And uh, we believe we are going to uh, get some uh, results within a uh, few days. Um, the media has played a major role in uh, at ensuring that uh, uh, this pressure is brought to bear on government. Um, the good thing is, uh, unlike past experiences, um, in this one, uh, the, there is a lot of publicity. The media is involved, and uh, it is involved not only nationally but internationally. And uh, we are convinced that uh, uh, the government uh, and the armed forces uh, will have no choice but to act and uh, get these girls back to their parents. Well, Dr. Beatrice, I can see as you speak, Mina is shaking her head. Unfortunately, we are right out of time. But Dr. Beatrice, Mina and Atom there in Ogun State, thank you so much for joining us here on World Have Your Say. Lots of ways for you to get in touch with us. Uh, you can upload your videos at worldhaveyoursay.com or as many of you already do via WhatsApp. But thanks so much for watching. I'll speak to you again.